What is the best scout loadout? This is perhaps the most important question in all of Team Fortress 2. And, of course, all the scout means should know this. Especially, I do. But then, my type of answer is different. Of course, you may think I would say something like the scout stock being the best scout primary, or hell, all stock being best, but it's not always like that. And so today, I would like to give up my overall thoughts on what I think is the best scout loadout. So we'll go through every single weapon and determine which is the best. So let's get right into it. And of course, there's nothing better to start than with the stock scout primary. And it's obvious, we know how useful it is, of course. But in case you don't know what it does, well, I'll explain. So, it's the only scout weapon that's got six shots, and it is lever action, which means it reloads where you press the lever. And overall, the weapon does deal pretty decent damage for a stock, and so in all, this is probably the best stock primary you can easily use. Now, a bit of a useful tip as well is that you should also remember to not always fire all six shots. So mainly, fire at least five shots and just keep one so you can reload faster, so you always have one shot. Anyway, let's now move on to the next one. Now, if there is any weapon that I say probably has mixed opinions, then I'd probably say it's Force of Nature. And there are several reasons why it has that kind of mixed opinions. So the first thing you obviously will notice is that you only get two shots before you have to reload. And reload time is often pretty slow, so you have to really be careful and aim properly. And if that weren't enough, this weapon also has knockback. Now, you may think that's okay, but sometimes it's not, and I'll explain. Now, the good part it has is that if you aim down, you can give yourself an extra jump. And combined with Atomizer's triple jump, you can pretty much have pretty good mobility. But that said, and do not take this lightly, it can also push back enemies. And when I said that it, you only get two shots, it means that your second shot is not going to do as much damage as your first shot. So in all, the force of nature isn't necessarily all that useful. Sure, you may find it useful in some circumstances, but by and large, I would just stick to stock, or the soda popper. Speaking of the soda popper, that's exactly what we're going to focus on right now. And I personally say it's a much better force of nature than the force of nature. So while it only has two shots like the force of nature, it still doesn't have that knockback. So in turn, you could do more damage with the Soda Popper than the Force of Nature at any constant range. And another thing is that it also comes with a hype function, which, while you think could be useful, I only really think it's more situational. So, meaning only use it to get out of some situations, like if you're gonna try and uh, plot an escape attempt. But the biggest advantage Soda Popper has over the Force of Nature is that it reloads maybe double faster than the Force of Nature. Because comparatively, the Force of Nature feels very sluggish to reload. So essentially, Soda Popper can pretty much be more suitable for faster paced combat. Overall, I would say the Soda Popper, while isn't used that much, I'd say it does seem to be more useful than the Force of Nature. Sure, it doesn't have as many shots as the stock, but you can still effectively get some performance out of it. And I know I did a few times. So yeah, give it a try for once, will ya? Alright, shortstop is honestly kind of a weird weapon for me now. I mean, sure, I have used it back when I was new, but I feel like it's kind of meh for me. Now, the good thing it does have is that it does have four shots, compared to Force Nature and Soda Popper having two shots. But then, all the shots don't really do or have much like damage difference no matter what range you really have. And also, it comes with a shove feature, but I rarely ever use it, and even if you do get a hit with it, you still probably wouldn't even push them very far. But even if you did somehow get a kill, I'm pretty sure everyone would probably just be laughing at you. Though, actually now I think about it, I would actually want to see 
kind of a frag movie involving the shortstop. That would honestly be pretty good to watch. But yeah, in all, shortstop just is kind of a strange weapon to use. I personally just probably wouldn't recommend it. Okay, I will be honest with you, the baby faces blaster is probably the weapon I rarely ever use, and there is a reason for that. Now, the boost feature is kind of useful, but it's not very all practical, and there are obvious reasons for that. So first of all, mainly if you get hit, your boost will reduce, and of course, even if you get hit by just one damage, a good portion of your boost is just straight up gone and then you just get slow to a crawl. And also, for whatever reason, double jumping also reduces your boost by a good portion. So you're almost advised to just stay on the ground when using it, and that's not what I want for a scout. I want to use double jump without any consequences. But if you're all about kind of a simple running gunning format that doesn't involve jumping, then well, this might as well be for you, but otherwise, just don't use this, it's just that simple. Backscatter I also do not use very often, and again, it has several reasons why, and, and it just conflicts with the gameplay that I wanted to choose. So while it does have the ability to mini crit if you're close enough and you shoot at their backside, but the really, it compensates for that, because it has less accuracy. And again, if you're doing long range, you may as well just stick to using something like a pistol or something. You know, if you're ever new to Scout, this is probably not a good weapon for you. Unless you're planning on playing specific maps. Alright, now we're moving on to the secondaries, starting with the stock pistol. Now, you know, I think that the stock pistol is actually pretty useful even if you're new to the game. And while it is useful, it also kinda is pretty boring. I mean, it doesn't really have anything really special or anything. It's just there, and not many people really use it. Alright, now for something a bit more useful, the Mad Milk. I would say this and the Pretty Boy's Pocket Pistol are my two preferred scout secondaries. And the Mad Milk really does come with a lot of utility, since when you hit an enemy that's covered in it, you'll regenerate health, which can pretty much count as a lifesaver for you and your teammates. And if that's not enough, you can also extinguish Afterburn if there isn't any water nearby that you can jump in, which again, that is a very useful lifesaver. And extinguishing an, a teammate with it can also reduce its recharge. So in all, Manamoke is probably pretty damn useful. But as I said, it ties with the Pretty Boy's Pocket Pistol, in my opinion. Okay, now, unless you kinda plan doing something gimmicky, or doing some interesting combos with other bleeding weapons, I would say the Flying Guillotine's probably not a very convenient option. So, it does have the ability to bleed, which can be super useful in some cases, but I still think that its ability to recharge, and that it's a secondary, just wouldn't really be any more useful than stuff like the Rap Assassin. Though, you could theoretically try to make it recharge faster if you get it to hit at farther range, but you have to kind of track your shot to actually get it to hit, which is kind of tricky to do because it is a projectile weapon, slash throwable. Even if you like trying gimmicky loadouts, you don't even need to use the guillotine, as simple as that. Try something like the Rap Assassin instead, which is melee. Now, I do seem to have kind of a kind heart toward people that use the Pretty Boy's Pocket Pistol. And as I stated previously, it is probably tied with the Mad Milk in terms of being the best um, scout secondary. So, I'd say they're both useful in their own rights. Now, the good advantage that it does is that it heals each shot, so you can definitely use this if you're in a bit of a pinch, and especially when you're using certain forms of playstyles. Now, of all of the three scout pistols, I would probably just say that Winger is probably the weakest in my opinion. 
So now, don't get me wrong, it does have a damage buff, and you can also jump higher with it. But what's the point of that when you only get 5 shots per mag? Now, I guess it's a pistol, and you're supposed to have it as a secondary to kind of switch to instead of reloading your primary. But 5 shots for a semi-auto pistol? No, I would rather just use a revolver th instead. Like, no thank you. I mean, it's like you're fighting, it's like if you fight in World War II, and at the time it was, that fighting was different. So meaning, you have rifles like the M1 Grand, which only hold 8 rounds, but then other weapons like the Thompson, which have, like, 30 rounds per mag. And, of course, if you're like me, who needs, who would need high enough capacity, if I were in that kind of scenario, I would just choose the Thompson, even if it shoots a pistol caliber. And, of course, the Winger is literally that kind of scenario that I mentioned before. So yeah, you know, I would just not really recommend this one. Okay, I've... I've pretty much got nothing on the Bonk Atomic Punch. Well, I mean, it can give you invincibility, but if you get hit, you just slow down after it expires, so... Yeah. I got nothing on it, fuck it. Except, well, I did use it a few times to distract sentries, but that's all I've pretty much used it for. Now, I'll say right now that Critical does have some of its uses. Yeah, it's not actually that bad, it's kinda meh, just like the stock pistol. So now, while it does have that mark for death thing after the ability expires, it and also has a the effect if you miss, if you actually have good aim, you won't get the, the mark for death while under the effect of the Critical. Uh, but of course, if it runs out, you gotta be careful for the extra two seconds. So yeah, in all, Critical, uh, isn't actually very terrible. I mean, I still would just choose the Pocket Pistol, but I could maybe just try using it again for some type of plays. Alright, let's get this straight. Unless you're new to the game, there is no reason that you should be using the Stock Bat. I mean, sure, it's got the cool Bat Saber reskin, but literally that's all there is. There's no real need for it. Just use something else. Okay, it is a little bit hard for me to determine how good Atomizer is. I mean, sure, it's got the cool triple jump and all that, and you can crit if you airborne hit an enemy, but there are some, like, like some downsides with this. And the one that mainly I have with is that trying to hit an airborne enemy, or at least trying to hit an enemy while airborne, is really tough. I mean, I mean, you know how easy it is to get a crit in Minecraft, right? You hit an enemy while you're falling, not jumping. But really, that is like really easy compared to Atomizer's air crit. And of course, that air crit would be a bit pointless because the Atomizer does less damage against players, so... I mean, would you still want to use Atomizer even if it does less damage against players? I don't think so. I probably would not. Okay, now, some people think that Boss Ambassador is the best scout melee, but personally, I don't really think that. I really think it's... well, not the worst. It's probably like mid, in my opinion. So while it does allow you to bleed an enemy, like the Flying Guillotine and the Rap Assassin, it obviously demands you to have to actually hit someone, because if you don't hit it, then you hit yourself, and then you bleed. So yeah, it's honestly one of those weapons that just puts you under so much, that just, you know, it gives you so much stress, and you don't want to have enough stress already. I mean, playing a scout is stressful if you don't know what you're doing. Alright, I am sorry to say this, but my guys, the Rap Assassin is the best scout melee of all time. Now, it is essentially kind of the Boss Ambassador and the Sandman combined, which both are me weapons, but Rap Assassin just has so much potential that not many people really understand. So, the good advantage it has over flying guillotine is that is a melee, so, you know, you can use the Rap Assassin with, like, let's say, the Mad Moog, so you can t potentially 
Heal Wall Bleed. Of course, you can do it with Bossing Basher, but it's much easier to do it with Rapposess. So, yeah, there's just so much combo potential that Rapposess has, and not many people understand. I... I don't want to talk about this one. But I'll say... If you still use Sandman in 2023, you're... You're fucking stupid. I'm sorry. <laughs> I I can't take it anymore. All right, now Candy Cane is probably the most strange scout melee, and I rarely ever use it. But when I do, I have no idea how the fuck it would work. Now, sure, it does drop a small health pack, but then it does make you more vulnerable to explodes. Explosives? What the fuck did I say? I don't care about our tech this time. But um, yeah, I would say this one, not very useful. Unless you don't rage at dying to the direct hit. And in which case, you must be the most calm player ever. <sighs> okay, I finally covered all the scout weapons. I don't know if I missed a few, but if I did, they may have just been reskins. But anyway, so now we've covered all the weapons, so now we should determine which is the best scout that you should be using. Well, here it is. That's what I'm talking about! Well, there you go. That is the best scout weapon loadout ever in Team Fortress 2. Yeah, this is a pretty long video to make. It took me like, I don't know, an hour or something? One or two hours? I don't know the time. But um, yeah, this is a pretty good video I've made. And I hope you all found this pretty useful and uh, learned something new. But anyway guys, that's gonna do for today's video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give the video a like. And um, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. And also ring the bell to get more videos like this in the future. See y'all. Oh, they're not. Get fucked up. They're not even here. They're not even here. What the heck? Oh my god, what the? Hey, you wanna see something? No, right. Hey, are they on Intel? Are they on Intel? Wait, they're on Intel. Uh, oh my jeez. Uh.